we're going to be converting our system over from electric drum brakes to electric over hydraulic disc brakes. And when we do this, we're going to be using Kodiak's XL Pro Lube kit for 5,200 to 6,000 pound axles. All right, now we've got our disc, our rotor here to uh, assemble before we go to put it on. This kit here is what we're going to be using to convert it over to a uh, oil bath system. So this is the oil that we're going to be using that comes in the kit. You also get new caps, so we're not going to be using the ones that we've removed here. We're going to be using these. Now, I will say that with this kit and what I found, especially with these particular rims that we had removed on this one, these stick out further than what the other caps do, and the center caps on your rims may contact the cap here. On the ones that we've got here, they, uh, they will contact the cap, so just keep that in mind. Um, you may have that issue at home if you have the exact same type of looking rims. The seals also come included in this kit, and it's necessary that you have these seals if you're going to oil bath. There's, there are a special seal that's different from uh, this type of regular grease seal. So yeah, we're gonna be using these. Um, so we're just gonna open this up here because we need the oil first, so that way we don't go together completely dry. And we also need to grab our seal out of here because that's gonna go on right after we put our bearing in. So we're just grabbing our oil out of there, grabbing one seal. We'll set the rest of it aside over there. And we're gonna grab our, our new bearing here, the exact same number as we had before, 25580. It's just gonna drop right down inside of there. Now I don't wanna go just in just yet. I always like to put a little bit of oil on it so that way it's uh, not going in completely dry. May have to, looks like we have to remove the seal from the top of the bottle there. So I'm just putting a little bit of the oil on there, kind of spinning it around, trying to help let it seep in. There we go. And then I'm gonna kind of rub it in with my fingers a little bit, try to get it around those rollers and onto the inner race inside of there. And that's pretty much good enough. We just, just trying to prevent any dry contact and then we just drop it down in there. Make sure you do put it the right way. We want the smaller diameter end to face towards the inside of the rotor. And now we can grab our seal and we're gonna drive that in. And with this, I like to put a little bit of oil on the seal as well, just to help it drive in a little bit easier. So we're just gonna put a little bit here on the back side. We don't need nearly as much with this. Just kind of run your finger around it. Just helps it slide in easier. All right, and then after you got that lubed up, you'll just set that on there, and then you'll drive it in. Now, I would recommend using a seal driving kit. We've got them available here at eTrailer, but I'll show you a couple of methods that you can use um, if you don't have that kit. All right, so if you don't have a seal driving kit, you can take a block of wood like this that extends all the way across, and we can use that to drive it straight down because ideally we want to drive this straight and we don't want to go crooked so as you're driving it in kind of pay attention if you got a spot that rises a little bit try to counteract that and now you guys at home that probably have mechanical and have serviced your brake assemblies before Replace bearings and seals. Normally, once you get the seal drove in there, flush with the back, you think, okay, well, I'm done. I got a little spot here that's still raised I gotta get. But usually when you get it flat, you think, hey, I'm done. But actually on these disc uh, brake conversions, it needs to be driven in further than flush. So we're gonna get it flush first. So we're just about ready to slide this um, onto here. But to prep ourselves a little bit, we're gonna clean up some of our old hardware here. So the, the nut, the washer, and the retainer, go ahead and get all those wiped down. We want those to be clean. We don't wanna transfer any of our grease over. And then this is our outer bearing. I just wanted to show you it is a different size than the one that we took off. It has the same inside diameter, but it's a little bit thicker, heavier duty bearing. And this is a 15123. This is the appropriate bearing that matches up with our disc brake rotor. So it's important uh, that both components, everything matches up, that this inner diameter is gonna be compatible with our spindle and that the rotor is gonna be compatible 
um, the race inside the rotor is going to be compatible with the uh, rollers here on the bearing. So it comes pre-installed with the race on the disc brakes. We don't have to worry about any of the races. We just got to make sure that this inner diameter is going to be uh, appropriate here. And that's, that's what this bearing does is for us. This is the appropriate size. We're going to put oil on this one as well because we don't want to put this one in dry too. So we're going to get all those things prepped real fast, get that stuff cleaned up, get this guy oiled, and then we'll grab our assembly here so we can slide it on. All right, so we got all of our parts prepared here. We're now going to grab the rotor assembly. Uh, actually, real quick, before I grab the rotor assembly, I'm going to put just a dab of oil on my finger. And I'm just going to even put just a little bit here on the spindle. This will just help the parts slide together a little bit easier when we go to slide that on here. Some of these newer parts and stuff, uh, it's such a tight tolerance. If it doesn't go perfectly straight. It's ever so slightly cocked. Um, you can get into kind of a binding situation. So this just helps minimize that. Now we're going to grab our assembly and we'll slide it into place. And you want to be careful when sliding it in. We don't want to nick the seal on anything. So we're going to try to be very careful to line up the hole and slide it in. It's like a game of operation. Don't touch the sides. And this is what we were talking about, that bearing kind of little stiff. The newer bearings, you might have to push it up just a little bit there. Okay, now we've got that slid on. We'll take our new bearing. I already got that prepared and oiled. Slide that in place. Cleaned up washer. We'll go right behind that. And then we'll take our nut here, thread it into place. And then after we get our nut on there, we're going to use the nut to ensure that this is fully seated. So grab your channel locks. Go ahead and clean any grease off at the end of those. And then just go ahead and tighten this down. Now the, we're going to tighten this fully. This isn't where we're going to leave it in the end. Again, we're just trying to make sure we've got all of our components fully seated. And I like to just kind of spin the rotor assembly with it just to make sure everything's kind of sliding and falling into place. All right, so that's, that felt like the end there. Just Put a little bit of extra oomph on it just to make sure that everything is fully seated. It should feel kind of stiff here when you give it a little bit of a turn. We don't want to turn it too much. That's what we're looking for. We know we are fully seated now. Now we're going to back it off. And it should be fully loose to where you can turn it by hand. And we're going to turn it just until it touches by hand, just like that. And that's where we kind of want our bearings to be set. That way they, they don't have like a preloaded pressure on them that's causing them to grind into each other. They've got the freedom they need uh, to ride, but we don't have excess play in there that can cause any, any damage from the components moving around. So that's right where we want to be. should feel nice and smooth when you turn it. Our retainer will go on next. And sometimes you do have to turn the nut just a little bit left or right here to get the retainer to go back on. You see there's a flat surface here. It lines up with the flat surface on the spindle. And then these kind of, these guys here, um, by either laying on a flat surface or one of the corner edges will go in between these two little prongs. So we're just gonna see if we can get it to line up and push it in place there. And again, every now and then you gotta turn the nut just a little bit in order to get it to the right position that's gonna uh, allow it to go all the way on. Looks like we're pretty close though. Um, when you get it real close like this, and you're almost all the way down, but it's stuck. You can usually just take your screwdriver and the palm of your hand and just tap it in the rest of the way. Just like that. There, there you go. All right. We've got our retainer on there. So at this point now, we are, we would be putting uh, the old cap on and, and filling this up with grease. Um, if we were doing grease, um, we oiled our bearings before we put them in. I would have packed them with a bearing packer uh, with grease before that. Uh, so if you are doing grease, make sure you pack those bearings first um, when we were doing the oiling portion of the bearing. And then now you can fill that up and 
uh, put your cap on. But we're gonna be changing it over to that oil bath, so we're gonna grab our new caps here from our oil bath kit. Grab the cap out of there. Unscrew the end of it there. We'll set this aside for a minute. We're gonna grab our oil once again. I'm gonna put just a little tiny bit on here just to make it easier to get it to insert. Yeah, just run it around the edge there a little bit. All right. And now we're gonna drive this into our rotor assembly. And this part here is a bit of a challenge just because this is such a tight fit it needs to be a very tight fit or else our oil would leak out so we're pressing this basically into our assembly so i'm just kind of getting myself lined up you're really going to have to get a good whack at it to get this thing to go into place so kind of move a few things out of the way so you get, can get a good drive at it we're going to use our wood block once again kind of get it lined up on there if you can, I like to start with the hammer by itself and see if I can get it to just kind of grab enough to hold itself on there. It just makes life a little bit easier if staying on there by itself. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. You know, we'll just see. That seems pretty decent. We'll now uh, drive it into place with our block of wood here. Looks pretty decent. Give her a spin, make sure that it's fully seated all the way around. And that all looks pretty good. We can now take that cap that we had removed a minute ago. I like to put just a dab on my finger and just smear it around the seal. Um, that can just help prevent any like nicks and cuts on your seal. We don't want to get it on all the threads if we can avoid it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's going to get oiled anyway, but I'm trying to get a little bit on the seal just to make sure it slides in without any tears or cuts. Here we're going to go ahead and fill up our rotor with oil. Or again, if you're doing the grease, you want to make sure you grease them. We're just using our screwdriver to help us pop out this little center cap. It's really, really tight in there. And then we'll open up our bottle the end just barely will fit in there you kind of gotta give it a twist a little bit and then we can fill that on up and we're going to spin it to help it kind of work its way throughout the system and we're gonna put just a little bit more in there grab our cap here and put that on now it may look like we're slightly overfilled but the oil, the thickness of it, it takes it a while to kind of work its way through the system because of its thickness. It's not like water, it doesn't fill in the gaps 100% immediately. There's some air pockets and things that get in there uh, due to the thickness of the oil that just makes it take a little bit longer to kind of settle. There we go. Push that back on there. So, you can see on the face of it, there's a fill line here. It's kind of a dotted line. We're a little bit above the fill line right now. Um, but as you spin this thing and as it sits here, that oil is gonna work its way through all those little cavities, getting all the air worked up uh, to the top and stuff. So that way it'll settle down. And well, it will likely end up being lower than the recommended fill line. So um, this is kind of something I would recommend is let it sit overnight and then the next day recheck it and top it back off then. And that completes our installation of Kodiak's XL Pro Lube kit.